Hey folks, this is Pastor Dave Grisham uh, for God and Country Ministries, and you can find us both on YouTube for God and Country, David Grisham, and also on Facebook for God and Country. And we have a, a cash app if you'd like to donate to the ministry. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the United States on the streets, so the money's always appreciated. It's dollar sign for God and Country Dave. For God and Country Dave. And today's uh, video is entitled Situational Awareness. I'm making this video at the request of my daughter who wants to present this to her church. So I thought I'd record this and, and just make it general for any church. Um, as a Christian, I want to help my uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want them to remain safe and secure during these troubled times. We're going, our, our nation is going through some trials and tribulations, and we're living in an increasingly unsafe world. Well, of course, to be safe spiritually, you need to rely on the Word of God. You need to rely on, on, um, on the Word and be in right standing with God. If you have a righteous relationship with God, the safest place for you to be is in His will, spiritually speaking. But I want to make a, a video today about your physical situation and maintaining your physical safety and security for you and your family. Let me explain to you a little bit about my qualifications to make uh, this video. I was a security police officer at a place called Pantex for 26 years. That was uh, my career. And that career is now over, but uh, for 26 years I did that. Pantex is the final assembly and disassembly point for all nuclear weapons produced in the United States. And it is one of the safest, most secure, most secretive facilities in the world. And we, as security police officers, we were a combination of like military police. We were police trained. I went through police academy and, um, and we were the police force for the nearly 4,000 plant employees that we had there in addition to the contractors and vendors and construction workers that we had there on a daily basis. And we were also worked in counterterrorism. Uh, many of us have been trained by ex-special forces, uh, ex-Navy SEALs, ex-Delta Force. These type people were in our training department and they trained us. Now, 20, like I said, I worked there for 26 years and um, uh, the last 10 of which I was on the SRT team, which is Special Emergency Response Team, what you would might call a SWAT team. So I was specially trained in that area. In addition to that, on the SRT team, I was also a member of a very elite Department of Energy team called the OP4 team, the Opposing Forces team, in which we trained in the tactics of terrorists. And then we went around to other DOE nuclear facilities around the United States and we would mock attack them using these tactics and they would defend against us. And these drills were used as a means of trying to figure out where they were going to spend and how they were going to spend their security funds. So I've had extensive training in, uh, in security. And so I am a security expert. And so I want to impart some of that knowledge to you today on situational awareness. This is the first and most key step in, in, uh, in your personal and family's security is situational awareness. Let me explain what that is. The definition of situational awareness is being alert and aware of the situation you are currently in and your surrounding environment. When you are in any environment, whether you're at the store, whether you're at home, whether you're traveling on vacation, whether you're getting onto a plane, in and out of a plane, whether you're in a crowded situation or you're out in the countryside, generally by yourself, you need to maintain an awareness of your situation and the environment around you. When I lived in Alaska, and my wife and I lived there for four years, whenever we went out into the wilderness, which is just basically right outside of town, if you lived in Anchorage or Wasilla or Palmer, which we lived in Wasilla and Anchorage uh, at various times when we were in Alaska. And anytime you went outside of town, you had to be bear aware. Being bear aware means being aware that you are never very far from a bear in Alaska. 
and you need to be prepared prior to going out and be constantly aware and looking around, watching for signs of a bear. You need to look for bear scat, bear tracks. You need to look for, uh, you know, uh, cubs running around climbing trees and knowing that the mother is there nearby somewhere. And we, and we always went out with bear spray and guns. People in Alaska carry guns everywhere because there are large dangerous animals and people are very bear aware. They also carry bear spray. As I never just carried, some people just carry bear spray. I never felt comfortable putting my life or the safety of my wife and grandchildren into the hands of just bear spray. So I took firearms as well as uh, bear spray because I wanted a backup in case the bear spray didn't work. So when you're in a situation, you need to maintain your situational awareness. Now I've taken some notes here and tried to organize myself on this to help you better understand. Have you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Richard Jewell. Uh, if you have not seen that movie, I would strongly encourage you to watch it. The movie Richard Jewell is about a security guard who was at the uh, Olympic Games uh, back, when the, back in the day, I think it was the early 90s, where they had the Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was a private security guard. He was not a police officer. He was not an FBI agent. All those were on the scene as well. Uh, in the movie, you see the, the police officers, they're all standing around in a circle at this concert and they're all just kind of shooting the breeze and, and they have a very low level of situational awareness because they're focused on socializing rather than what's going on around them. Their eyes are inward rather than outward. And, and the FBI, the FBI agent was there and he's watching the show. He's not, his head should have been on a swivel looking around, seeing what's going on, looking at people's hands, looking at their waistlines, checking for weapons, all kinds of things. He was not there to enjoy the show. He was there to do a job, but instead he was there goofing off. And this made the FBI look bad, but there was one security guard, Richard Jewell, who was probably paid minimum wage, but his head was on a swivel. He was doing his job. He took it very seriously and he was very aware of every situation around him. He was keeping track of some kids that were vandalizing some stuff and he was concerned about that and he came across a backpack. He came across a backpack under a bench and he thought, this is out of place. This shouldn't be here. Someone has abandoned this. This could be a threat. It's a crowded area. It's a high profile uh, Olympic Games, it's, 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 you know, the whole world is watching. It is a potential terrorist target, so we need to have this check. So he went to the law enforcement and begged and pleaded with them, and they finally got a bomb squad guy to go over and look at the bag, and sure enough, when he opened the bag, he said, that's the largest pipe bomb I've ever seen. And they backed the crowd away. Moments after they got the crowd back to a, not even a fully safe distance, it exploded and it injured some people. And I think one person may have died. I can't remember exactly. But the, the, the thing is that the situational awareness of this security guard saved a lot of lives. Situational awareness is the number one key component in keeping yourself safe in any environment that you find yourself in. Situational awareness is number one. Now, we were always trained that you are in one of several conditions. Whenever you are out and about in your daily life, you're in one of several conditions. You're either in condition white, which is totally oblivious to what's going on around you. And, and I see this all the time. I will go into Walmart and try to go down an aisle and there'll be three or four people standing in the aisle. You've seen this. And they'll be talking and yakking and going on, and they are completely oblivious to the fact that other people are trying to get down the aisle, and they're right in the big middle of the aisle blocking it, and you're sitting there waiting for them to notice you, and they don't even notice you. You have to turn around and go around and go to the other end of the aisle to get what you want by going all the way around. 
because these people have no situational awareness of what's going on around them. They're not aware of anything that's going on because their attention is focused inward and not outward. They're engrossed in their conversation and they're socializing and they're so focused on what they're doing that they're not paying attention to what's going on outside of themselves. And they have no idea who's behind them. They have no idea what's going on. If something bad happened in the condition white, they would go straight to what we call condition black, which is in a total panic, total confusion, total surprise. You don't ever want to be in that position. Um, I knew some people years ago, a woman who said one day her and her husband woke up in the middle of the night because they heard a noise. And you know what it was? There was a strange man standing in their bedroom at the foot of their bed. That is me, That's what that means from condition white, a totally asleep and unaware to complete and total panic. They said it was one of the most terrifying things they'd ever been through in their life. You don't want to go from condition white to condition black. If you are in, if you live your life in condition white, if you're running around with your head in your phone all the time, if you're texting constantly, if you're focused on shopping and you're only looking at the aisle on what you're looking for and you're not scanning around you at all, you're ignoring everything in your peripheral vision, you are in condition white. And if something bad happens, it's gonna take you totally by surprise and you're gonna go straight to condition black, which is panic and chaos. Now, what you should be is in condition yellow. Condition yellow is relaxed, but alert and focused on everything, not just what's in front of you. You don't get so laser focused on what you're doing and what you are trying to accomplish or what you are saying to someone else that you're not also looking around you, okay? Condition yellow is the condition you want to live in. You want to live in that caution zone, condition yellow. Now condition orange is a level above that. And what that is, is you think there's something that might be wrong. You, that you're in condition yellow, you're doing whatever it is you do, you're looking around and you notice something out of place. That's condition orange, and you focus on that. Now, condition red means something is wrong. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you are in a state in which they have, like here in Texas, we have constitutional carry for firearms, okay? So you are in the store, you're in condition yellow, you're looking around, you notice a guy carrying concealed because you see his gun print through his shirt and you see the firearm there and you're thinking, condition orange could be a problem. Probably not. Most of the time, this is a law-abiding citizen, but you keep an eye just in case, you know, and keep your distance and so forth, and you're being cautious. The person draws the gun, now that's condition red. That means something is wrong. Either he's a lawful citizen about to use that firearm lawfully, or he's a criminal and something bad is about to happen. So, but see, if somebody draws a gun in the middle of somewhere and you are in condition white, you, you don't have no, you have no idea what's going on and you're gonna go straight to panic. But if you are already prepared for that possibility, you've already been thinking in your mind what you might end up doing if something does go wrong. So that's the, that's the difference, the, the condition, you never want to be in condition white because that leads to condition black or something bad happens. You want to stay in condition yellow, which is relaxed and alert and aware of your surroundings. So you can go to condition orange if necessary and even condition red if something truly does go wrong. Then you won't be taken by surprise and you won't be in panic. Okay. Situational awareness is being people aware. Just like in Alaska, when you're out in the woods, you gotta be bear aware. You have to be people aware. You have to be concerned with not only who is in front of you or what is, it's like when you're driving a car. I want you to imagine when you're driving down the road, this is when you exercise situational awareness on a daily basis. If you're driving, you're paying attention to what's on the road and you're looking on the side streets. 
you're watching for the Yahoo that might run a stop sign and run right in front of you. If you're not, and you're fiddling around with the radio or you're yakking on the phone and you're not paying attention, you're trying to text and drive at the same time, you're likely to get into an accident. You're not being situationally aware when you're driving, if that's the case. What I'm saying is that the same attitude you have about proper driving is the same attitude you should have about your daily life when you're just walking around. You're walking around in Walmart. You're at the laundromat. You're at the bank. You know, banks get robbed. When you go into a bank, you should be aware of what's going on as you walk in the door. You might want to turn around and walk right back out if you see something amiss. So, in any case, there are three... I wanna I want walk you through these steps of preparation first. There are three basic steps of preparation that will keep you safe at all times. And these are what they taught us in the military, if you are, and I was in the military also, by the way. Um, if you are trapped behind enemy lines in the military, they teach you three basic steps to stay out of the hands of the enemy, to stay safe. Avoidance, evasion, and escape. And these are the three things you need to practice in your life as a means of pre-preparation. You prepare ahead of time. Situational awareness is not just being aware of where you are currently, but where you plan on being in the future. In other words, when you start to go somewhere, like say today, I'm going to go to, to Lubbock. I live near Lubbock. And so if I'm going to drive into Lubbock and I'm going to go to the bank, I've got to go do this or I got to go do that. I'm going to prepare before I go. I'm going to make sure I got gas in my truck. I'm going to make sure that, uh, you know, there's no check engine lights on. I'm going to check my vehicle, make sure everything's good. I'm going to make sure I got all the stuff I need. If I need to make a deposit at the bank, I've got to have my money. I've got to have certain things. I've got to make sure I'm prepared before I go, okay? So I'm preparing for that situation before I ever get there. You need to do the same thing in your mind when it comes to situational awareness. You need to prepare before you get into any situation when you leave home. Number one is avoidance. Avoidance is not going to places where you think trouble might be. If you don't ever want to get beat up by a gang of outlaw bikers, my suggestion is don't go to biker bars, okay? This is, this is common sense. You, you avoid going to places where you know trouble might be. For example, let's say you're driving home alone at night. It's stormy, the roads are not good, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, this would be a horrible time to have a flat tire. There's only one thing that you can do to really control that kind of situation. And that is determine what kind of environment you're gonna drive through on the way home. For example, if it's raining and it's stormy, it's a bad night, you don't really wanna have car trouble, you're worried, you, you know, you, what, this would be a terrible time to have a flat tire. The shortest distance might be to your home might be through a really bad neighborhood but is that a really good idea? It's a little longer to go through a nice neighborhood, but if you have a flat tire in a nice neighborhood, you're not gonna put yourself in a position to where you have to worry about your safety nearly so much. So if you're driving along late at night and it's stormy and the road conditions are bad and you're thinking to yourself, you know, this would be a bad time to have a car problem, uh, maybe you should take that longer route. Take the safer route. Be cautious. Caution over courage. It's, it's a good thing to have courage if you need to have it, but it's a good thing to have caution. I'm not talking about cowardice. I'm talking about caution. Caution over courage. Oh, no, oh nothing's going to happen to me. Nothing's ever going to bad happen. Listen, Murphy's Law applies to all of us. If something bad can happen, it will. Make sure that if you put yourself in the right position, and if it does happen, you don't hinder yourself any more than necessary. So don't drive through a bad neighborhood on a dark, stormy night when it's the, sh it's the safest or it's the shortest way to get there. Don't take the shortest route. Take the safest route.
This is situational awareness. You're aware of the potential problems that could occur. You're aware of the situation you are in and the conditions around you, and you take pre-active steps, pre-planned steps to prevent yourself from getting put into a situation that might jeopardize your security. This is what you do. You think ahead, you think ahead, okay? That's avoidance. You avoid that bad neighborhood and you take a different route. This is the practice. If, you, if, you believe, if you've been watching in the news that there are riots going on in a city and you're planning on going to visit your relative in that city, maybe you decide to postpone your trip. Maybe you decide not to go at that time. Maybe you decide not to go at all. Maybe you tell your family member they should come visit you because your city is safer. If you are aware of things going on around you, then you're more likely to be able to prepare for it. And if you do, you're more likely to be safe in the long run. Avoidance will keep you out of 90% of all trouble. Just that one practice, avoidance. Uh, it's like firearm safety. You know, you're never going to have an accidental discharge of your fingers never on the trigger when it shouldn't be. Uh, if you treat the gun as if it's always loaded. Right? This is situational awareness with a firearm. You're careful with the gun because you know things can go wrong. You're careful in your life because you know things can go wrong. And so you prepare ahead of time for that. Situational awareness, avoidance is one of those keys. You avoid going to places where you think trouble might be. Okay, that's number one. Evasion. Let's say you're walking down the street and you see a group of questionable individuals walking on the same side of the street as you, and they're about a block away. Don't wait until they get right in front of you to decide that there's a problem. Take a few extra steps, walk across the street, go down the other side of the street, or maybe make a left-hand turn, go the next block over and go around. This is evasion. If you see what is a potential problem coming, because you are situationally aware, you are aware of your surroundings and what is ahead of you and what might be confronting you, you take proactive steps to evade that problem if you see it coming. If you can't avoid being in that place to begin with, for instance, maybe you have to be walking down that street because you're going to work. Maybe you've parked your car in a parking lot or a parking garage and you're walking to work and you've got to walk a few blocks and you see a group of what look like thugs walking down the street towards you and you want to avoid them, cross the street. Just cross the street before they even see you, before it even becomes an issue. Cross the street, keep your eye on them as you go by, right? That's evasion. If you see trouble coming or the potential for trouble coming, you evade it. You take a 90 degree turn and you get out of its way. That's number two. Number three is escape. You only fight if you have to because the best way to win a fight is not to get involved in one in the first place because inevitably someone's going to get hurt, okay? Even if you win the fight, you still haven't won the fight in, in the respect that is if you avoided it. You win every fight that you avoid, okay? If you avoid this fight, and you, and you escape. If, if, the, if the gang of thugs comes at you and, and they want the sidewalk, get out of the way. Just escape. Just go in, go, in a, go in a flower shop. Just, oh, I'm gonna go shop for flowers and boom, dodge into the flower shop. Just escape. Get out of the way, okay? So avoidance, evasion, and escape. Those three things will keep you out of 99% of trouble. Now, this video is not concerned with defending yourself at this point. This video is not going to be addressing the issue of self-defense or firearms or anything like that. I'm going to make a series of videos, and eventually I will discuss those things. On my next video, I will discuss how to keep yourself safe at home, how to make sure that you don't ever wake up with somebody standing at the foot of your bed and you're never in that terrifying position, okay? You can avoid getting into that position at home as well as away from home, and I will teach a video on that later on. So, we don't wanna get distracted by our phone, 
music, like when if you if you're jogging and you've got earbuds in your ears and you're jogging down the street. Now you do have some level of visual situational awareness in that situation because when you're running, you have to be watching for oncoming runners, you have to watch for traffic. Uh, when you're crossing streets, you have to be situationally aware. But your situational awareness does not begin and end with just your eyes. It also begins with your ears, okay? You have to listen to what's going on around you. If you're jogging by a couple of guys, if say you're a, an attractive woman, and you jog by a couple of guys, and they make some nasty remarks about you as you jog by and then suddenly fall in behind you, this can be a problem, okay? So if you don't hear that conversation, though, as you go by, if you don't hear that and you don't get alerted to that, uh, then you're gonna have, you may have a problem. Another thing is maybe you don't hear a dog barking and chasing after you that you need to stop and turn and confront, and you get end up getting a little dog come up and nip you on the heels. You can avoid that situation by being aware. Don't have earbuds in your ears while you're jogging, okay? Do not be so engrossed in what you are doing. You, to do this properly, you have to be a little less self-focused, okay? You have to be a little more outwardly focused. Not, not totally outwardly focused. I'm, I'm not talking about paranoia. I'm talking about being outwardly focused enough that nothing takes you by surprise. Okay? So don't be distracted by your phone, music, daydreaming, worrying, shopping, kids running around, tardiness. If you're late for something, you get in a big hurry, you're so focused on getting there fast that you end up getting yourself into a problem. And so you don't want, you want to avoid that. You want to make sure that your situational awareness, that your, the awareness of your situation and the environment around you doesn't lack or doesn't, uh, doesn't lack because you are distracted by something else. Okay. Don't allow yourself to become so focused on one thing that you become tunnel, you have tunnel vision and you become blind to everything going on around you because that's, Criminals look for people that are distracted because they can take them by surprise. They use that element of surprise to go after your purse, to go after your wallet, to mug you, to rape you, to assault you, to kidnap you. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a minute. I want you to play a game in your mind and I want you to practice this. You can practice situational awareness and practice focusing on watching other people. It's being people aware. You have to be a people watcher if you're gonna be situationally aware, okay? It doesn't mean you stare at somebody necessarily. Sometimes you might have to. If you, somebody is, thinks they're going to come, if you think that person is a threat, staring at them eye to eye and recognizing that you see them and you know that they're looking at you, oftentimes will make them change their minds because they know now that you're aware and you cannot be taken by surprise. But you want to play a game. Play a game called Who's Got the Gun? Who's Got the Gun? And what you do is basically you walk around in a normal environment. Let's say you're at Walmart and you're on your way to the electronics department. And you can just do this while you're on the way to the electronics department. You can just run this through your mind. Okay, who might have a gun? And just think this in your mind and then just start looking at people. Look at their hands. If someone's gonna hurt you, they're gonna hurt you with their hands. That's where they're gonna have a gun or a knife or that's where they're gonna punch you or they're gonna grab you or choke you or, or knock you down, push you. They're gonna do it with their hands. Watch people's hands and their waists. Most men carry guns around their waist and their pockets, something like that. It's a jacket, hoodie, uh, pocket, waistband, that sort of thing. Look for the imprint of a gun. Look for, and concentrate on this. Scan everyone around you. Men, women, you don't have to worry so much about little children. I'm not talking, I'm talking about like, you know, little, little nine-year-olds, eight-year-olds. Bigger ones, teenagers, you do have to worry about. 
I'm talking, but scan around and play this little game. Who's got the gun? Just to see if you can spot somebody carrying a gun. And you'd be surprised that sometimes you will spot someone carrying a gun. Now, it may be legal in your state. It may not be. It could be, it could be an off-duty police officer. It could be a criminal. You never know. But play this little game in your mind as you're walking, say, from the, begin the front of the store to the electronics section, and you're going to go buy whatever it is you're going to buy. Practice this little game and look around. Who might have the gun? And just scan the room everywhere you go, down every aisle, looking at, concentrating on their hands and their waistbands and their pockets, okay? So try that little game sometime. You'll find it kind of entertaining. And it'll also sharpen your skills on looking for things, weapons, things that could are potential threats, okay? Now, situational awareness is not paranoia. You don't want to be paranoid. As I said, there, these are some practical ideas for this, and I've written these down in a list because I didn't want to forget any of them. Uh, like I said, look at people's hands. If they're going to hurt you, they're going to do it with their hands. Number two, be aware of who is behind you. Don't ever get so focused on what you're doing and become so distracted by the things of the moment that you're not aware of who or what is behind you. It, you should have an instinctual feeling that if someone walks behind you, that you should turn and kind of look. At least turn your head enough that your peripheral vision will catch that person. Most people are not aware of this, but your peripheral vision actually picks up movement easier than your direct vision in front of you. And, and, and focus on, on what you, on the unusual, what you think is out of place. There's an exercise that we used to have, a video that we used to have to watch. We watched it in Police Academy, and, and um, basically it was, um, it was a demonstration on situational awareness. And what it was is it was a bas two basketball teams, and they were passing a basketball back and forth. And you were, and this, you were given the instruction, okay, count the number of times they pass the basketball. And so here comes the basketball team, and they're passing it and passing it. And after about 20 seconds of this, a man in a gorilla suit, wearing a basketball uniform, but a hands and the head of a gorilla, gorilla feet, walks into the, into the midst of the basketball team, looks around at all of them for a couple of seconds, and then walks out. Okay, 90% of all people are so focused on counting the passes, they never see the gorilla. They never see the guy in the gorilla suit. Only a few actually see it. You need to be the person that sees the guy in the gorilla suit. You need to be the person that sees the things that other people don't see. It's just like when you are driving, as I said earlier, you're looking not just the car in front of you, you're looking two or three cars up ahead. Because if you see brake lights come on suddenly, three or four car brake lights come on, you want to be able to hit your brakes in time so you don't slam into the car in front of you. You can't just watch the car in front of you. You have to be aware two or three cars down the road. The same is true in any situation that you find yourself in, walking around, doing your normal daily activities at the store, at the laundromat, at the bank, whatever, is, is look ahead. Look at people's hands, okay? Be aware of who is behind you. Never let someone get in behind you. If, if you're uncomfortable somebody being behind you, move, move. Or, or if, if you're not comfortable somebody being behind you, especially if you have a concealed carry permit, if you are carrying a firearm, you should probably sit with your back to a wall and, and with an exit door facing the front of you. So if someone comes in, you can see what's going on. Um, but, but be aware of what is behind you. Number three, be automatically suspicious of uninvited contacts with strangers. If a stranger suddenly approaches you to ask you a question, you've never seen this person before, you don't know who they are, you should automatically be suspicious of this person. You should maintain at least six feet of distance. You know, most people have a, a personal space of about three feet. Somebody gets inside of that. If somebody 
If somebody is coming towards you and they're trying to intrude on your personal space, don't go straight backwards because they may be a distraction and someone else may be behind you. Go sideways if you can. Move to the side. Move to the side. If, if, they're, if you're in a parking lot, for instance, and I've seen this happen before, if you're in a parking lot and somebody and you park and you get out and somebody approaches you, move around the other side of the car and keep the car between you and them and talk to them across the car. Put that object, put some object or something between you and them where they have to cross over it to get to you and engage that person in the conversation and that will help keep you safer. Be aware of your position of where you are and where they are. And if the media, as soon as they come up and try to confront you, the first thing you ought to be doing is looking behind you. You ought to be looking to see if this is, this because this could be a conversation or it could be a distraction. If you are confronted by an uninvited, unexpected stranger, you should immediately look around you to see if somebody's trying to come up behind you in case there's more than one of them, okay? And if there is, you need to find a path and get out of there. It may be time to run, okay? So if, so, if an uninvited uh, uh, stranger confronts you suddenly, automatically be suspicious, check your rear behind you, check to both sides, put an object between you and them like a car, your, your, your shopping basket, put it between you and them, keep them at a distance, don't let them get real close. If they try to, you might need to run, okay? Like I said, number four, is it innocent or a distraction? Innocent or distraction? It could be a distraction. Always remember that. And I'm talking about an uninvited contact with a stranger. If you approach a store manager at the store, that's not a problem. But if all of a sudden a stranger just pops out of nowhere and wants to confront you, that can be an issue, okay? Be very suspicious of that. If you are a, especially, especially if you are a woman, you have children, um, and you're more, you have to recognize, okay, I know this is going to upset some feminists. I don't care. Okay, I don't care. Women are weaker than men. Okay. Understand that women are physically weaker and they're physically slower than men. You generally cannot outrun them. So you need to get a head start. You generally cannot outfight them, so you need to avoid a fight if at all possible. Okay? So don't park your car. This is a general rule. I, I want to talk about parking cars for a minute because this is this is where some of these things happen, is in parking lots. Because you're alone, you haven't got out there yet, you're they're near their vehicle where they can grab you or grab your purse and try to make it to their vehicle and take off. So a lot of these bad things tend to happen in parking lots. So let's talk about parking lots for a minute. Okay, when you come into a parking lot, don't just find the most convenient place to park. Don't be so focused on getting that close spot where you don't have to walk so far, okay? Parking close is not a bad idea, but don't be so focused on it that you ignore dangers that might be in the parking lot. First of all, take the time of day into account. If it's at night, if it's after dark, either early in the morning or at night, your heightened alert level should be twice of what it is during the day. Because during the day, you can see better. At night, you need to be more cautious. You cannot see quite as well. And the forces of darkness, the evil people, they, they take advantage of that. They are people of the dark, okay? So if you pull into a parking lot... You need to scan the parking lot to see what's going on. If you see a group of thugs hanging out in the parking lot, maybe you need to go to a different store, you know? Maybe you just need to leave while you're still in your vehicle and just drive away. Go to a different place, okay? If you are driving and you notice that there is a group of men, two or three of them, sitting in a vehicle who are doing nothing other than just looking around the parking lot, just sitting in their car. Don't go anywhere near that vehicle. Don't go anywhere near it, okay? Stay away from that vehicle because that could be a group of criminals looking to steal something. As a matter of fact, it might be good just to leave and go to a different store, like I said. Yeah, that might be an option. If you don't want your car broken into while you're gone, 
into the store. They may not confront you. They may be after your vehicle and you leave something they think is valuable in your vehicle. They may get into your vehicle and try to get it. But what I'm talking about right now is your personal safety. Do not park next to a van if you can avoid it. Uh, there is a technique that uh, criminals use if they want to kidnap someone. This is especially true on the southern border of the United States. Women have been kidnapped in Walmart parking lots right on the southern border of the U.S. because they will park next to a van. They will get out. The doors will open on the van. The passenger doors will open and somebody will grab them, pull them into the van, and they drive off. Avoid parking next to a van if you can avoid it, okay? Look around. Is there somebody sitting behind the wheel of a van? Is it running? Is it winter and you can see the, you can see the exhaust coming out of the pipe? Why is that vehicle running, okay? Don't park next to it necessarily. Just park a little ways away from it. Stay away from it, okay? Avoidance, remember, avoidance, evasion, and escape. You practice those three things in every step of everything you do in your situational awareness. You practice these things, you watch, you look all the time. You're always aware of what's going on. Never park next to a van. Never park next to a vehicle that's got a group of men in it. Now, if it's a bunch of teenage girls, you're probably fine. <laughs> You know, they might ask you for some makeup, but if you're parking next to a group of men in a van or a, a car and they're just eyeballing the parking lot, that's a bad sign. If you see a car circling around the parking lot that doesn't appear to be looking for a place to park, but might be, you know, checking out the area for a potential problem, stay away from that area. But be aware, especially aware in parking lots, okay? You especially wear in parking lots. Scan the area before you park, that's number six, and get out and you get out of your own car. Do not get out of your own car until you're absolutely sure it's safe. You check your mirrors. As soon as you park your car, you check your mirrors, okay? You don't just check your mirrors when you're backing up. You pull in, you stop. You're getting your purse together. You're doing all of that. Before you unlock that door and you get out of that car, you check all your mirrors. You make sure nobody's walking up next to your car, approaching you, waiting for you to open your door so they can just grab you, okay? Check your mirrors before you get out of the car, ladies, okay? Always check your mirrors. Men, gentlemen, this is, applies to you too, but especially you ladies, because most women, are the, they're the victims of these types of crimes, okay? Check your mirrors before you get out of your car. Um, if you suspect you're being followed in your car, don't go home. Do not show them where you live, okay? Do not drive to your best friend's house and go, I think this guy might be following me. Well, why'd you bring him here? Go to a police station, go to a highly public area or find a police car sitting on the side of the road running radar and just pull up behind him and go, hey officer, uh, I think these guys right here might be following me, you know? And point at the car as it's driving by, okay? If you think a car is following you, there are several techniques you can use. There, you can either go really slow or you can go really fast. If you're on the highway and the speed limit is 60, if you go 85 and they're still keeping up with you, they may be following you. If you slow down to 45 and they're slowing down to match your speed and staying behind you, they might be following you. If you... Um, driving on the, on the right-hand side of the lane and you suddenly take an exit without signaling and they just jump in behind you, they might be following you. So if you, are, if you do suspect you're being followed uh, and, and watch your mirrors, keep in mind, you know, memorize the cars behind you. When you're looking in your mirrors, go, hey, you know, I've just noticed that pickup truck has been behind me for the last 20 miles. I think I'm just gonna take this next exit and go get some gas at this public station that's well lit and see if they follow me over there. And if they do, pull in to the gas station, the truck pulls in behind you, turn around and get back up on the highway and take off and see if they continue to follow you. And then you'll know they're trying to follow you. And if, you, if they're not, then, you know, no problem. You may have lost them. So anyway, there are techniques you can use. 
Uh, I'll, I'll make another video about that, about driving, that's focusing on driving, on the different techniques you can use for evading somebody who's following you and things like that. I'll make another video on that. But this, I just want to go over this just in a general sense as part of situational awareness. These are practical ideas for maintaining situational awareness. Look in your mirrors in your cars. When you even pull up to a stoplight and you're stopped, check your mirrors behind you for somebody that might be crossing the road and trying to come up on your side or your passenger side and try to jump in. Leave yourself enough space. When you pull up behind a car at a light, leave yourself enough space that you can maybe get around them if you have to. If somebody starts to walk up and try to approach your car, that you can maneuver around with your car, okay? Use your car as a weapon or a means of escape, okay? Don't go home, though, if you suspect you're being followed. Never, never go home, okay? Be on alert for blocking movements. People who want to victimize you will oftentimes do a blocking movement. They will, they will for instance, you'll walk down an aisle in a, a grocery store and somebody will back up and suddenly block your way for no apparent reason. And be aware, immediately check your back, your rear end, check your rear, check if anybody's behind you if that happens. If they suddenly block you, turn around and go back the other way. Just leave, okay? Blocking movements oftentimes are a suspicious activity. And so if somebody suddenly blocks your path, that's normally a danger sign. And you should automatically look behind you. Remember, avoidance. Avoid places where you can be blocked in. Okay, try not to go to places where you can be trapped in that area, okay? If it, and and uh, listen to your instincts. Listen to your instincts, okay? Pre-think escape routes. Okay, I have a friend of mine who's a pilot. And um, he's a very smart young man. He's a bush pilot in Alaska. And whenever he flies his routes, he flies to certain villages and he delivers things, you know, like uh, uh, milk or whatever. He delivers Amazon packages. This is how the, the, if you're out in the middle of a remote village in Alaska and there's no roads out there and you order something on Amazon, some bush pilot's got to deliver it for you. And boy, that's not going to be free delivery, let me tell you. But anyway... So he'll fly, and he's already, as he is flying, he has already thought, well, what if I have engine trouble right here? Where would I put this plane down if I went, if I went down right here? He's already thought about these things ahead of time. And he's thought, okay, I would try to put down in, in that riverbed right there. So he's always looking in his environment and being situationally aware that if something goes wrong, he needs to know where he can put that plane down as safely as possible. Where can I turn around to go back to? Where can I glide down and try to land? And so you need to be doing this too. You need to pre-think escape routes. If you, are, if you do a regular jogging path, say you run your neighborhood all the time, okay? You need to think to yourself, if somebody were to try to jump me right here, where would I go? Where would I run to? Would I turn back and go the other direction? Would I make a sharp right turn, sharp left turn? Would I just speed up? Would I try to go here? Would I try to go there? You, you always try to pre-think your escape routes, especially like, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're on your way to and from work, you already have this thought out um, more than likely if you've been doing this for a long time. Let's say you work at a place, you've been working there 10 years, and you're driving along and, and suddenly there's a car accident blocking the, the street that you normally take. You probably have alternate routes already planned out. Well, if there's a car accident, I, I go this way. It's the same kind of principle. Pre-think your escape routes whenever you are on a particular route that you do all the time. Pre-think your escape routes if something bad should happen so that if something does come up, you're not in a panic mode. You want to avoid going into condition black. The best way to avoid that is being in condition yellow, be on a conditional alert all the time. Be alert and aware of your surroundings all the time, okay? But pre-think your escape routes. 
examine the scene before you enter. When you, when you pull up at home, let's say you come up home at night. You drive up at home at night and you suddenly notice the side gate is open. Well, that's a danger sign. Somebody might be in your backyard or went into your backyard. Maybe they went in your backyard and broke in your back door and they're waiting for you in the house. Okay, so you need to stop and evaluate that situation before you just go marching straight into the house. When you approach your home after you've been away for a while, you should look for anything out of the ordinary, a broken window, a door open, a gate ajar, the gates open, the dog has escaped. Who let the dog out? Um, oftentimes when somebody's gonna burglarize your house, they will open the gate and walk away. And then the dogs will escape and then they'll come back later and break in your home because they don't wanna deal with the dogs. This is a common tactic. So if you notice something amiss with the scene, uh, don't go inside. If you're going to the bank, and you're about to walk in and you look through the glass, you see people laying on the floor, are you gonna go inside the bank? No, you're gonna go outside, get in your car and go down the street about a block or so and call the police. You're gonna get away from that bank and get on the phone and call the cops. However, if you're not paying attention to what's going on and you just walk right into the middle of the room and everybody's on the floor, now there's a gun in your face and it's too late. Evaluate the scene before you enter the scene, okay? Evaluate it, look at it. Does it look out of place? Is there something weird going on? Is there something open that should be closed? Is there something closed that should be open? Is there something broken that was not broken before? Is there something moved out of place? You know? So anyway, so evaluate the scene before you go in, that's before you park your car, that's before you get out of your vehicle and go inside the building, whatever that may be. Look around, don't just get focused on, oh, I gotta find my keys to get in the house and you're not paying any attention. If somebody's waiting in, on you in the house, that's what they're counting on, is that you'll be so distracted with coming home on a daily basis, you're filling with the groceries and all that, that they're gonna take you by surprise. But when you walk up to that door and you see tool marks on the door, whoa, back up. It's time to go. It's time to get back in the car, drive down the block, call the police. I think somebody might have broken into my house. Okay? Let the police go in. That's their job. Okay? If, examine the scene before you enter. What looks out of place? If anything looks out of place, you should, your, your alert level should go from yellow to orange yellow to orange. If something is out of place, something might be wrong. And then when you examine it more closely, if, you are, if your suspicion increases, you're at level red, that's when you back away. That's when you evade or you escape, okay? That's when you evade or you escape. You just get in your car and leave, you walk away, you get out of that area, you call for some help, whatever it is you do. But you don't just dive right in there. Okay? Caution before courage. We're not talking about cowardice here. We're talking about caution before courage. Don't just go bravely barging into a situation that you should use caution for, okay? Especially if you're dealing, if you have children or, or things like that. Maintain your space from strangers at all times. You should always try to maintain a, a distance from strangers. Um, this is to avoid pickpockets and, you know, and, and things like that. Um, you shouldn't be going to bars where people are so packed in there that you're shoulder to shoulder. I wouldn't recommend going to bars anyway because bars are where people get drunk and that's where people get raped. That's where people get shot. That's where, you know, avoidance, right? But if you're in some place, don't go in there if it's packed shoulder to shoulder where somebody could grope you or someone could... Um, uh, steal your wallet or reach into your purse or stab you and then walk off. You know, you never know. So anyway, so maintain your distance from strangers. Keep your children close. Don't let your children in a store or something wander off to where they get scattered out. Keep them close to you because if something happens, you don't want to have to go looking through the store for them. 
okay? You know, it's it's like the movies, you know, they always get separated from their kids. I gotta go find my kid, you know? Bullets are flying and there's an active shooter on the loose and, and I gotta find my, I gotta find Johnny. Well, why wasn't Johnny with you to begin with? Don't let your children wander all over stores. Don't let them wander all over the place. Keep your children close, okay? Keep your children close. So if something does happen, you don't go into freak out mode. And listen, this last thing, listen to your gut instincts. Your gut instincts will tell you if something is terribly wrong. Sometimes, what that is, what your gut instinct really is, it's your subconscious mind putting the pieces of a puzzle together that you're not consciously able to put together. Sometimes you're like, well, there's something wrong with this, but I just can't put my finger on it. That's your mind, your subconscious mind, putting these pieces of the puzzle together and making them fit, even though you can't consciously understand that. So if your gut instincts are telling you, don't go in there, or don't get out of the car, or don't park here, don't go to this store. If you drive up to a convenience store at night and you can't see the clerk behind the counter, don't go in. Don't go in. They may be laying on the floor with a gun to their head. They may be in the back cooler, you know, and the place may be rob may getting robbed right at the moment. If there's no one else there but the clerk and you can't see the clerk, that could be bad, okay? So if your gut instincts are telling you this is a bad situation, don't dismiss that, okay? Don't dismiss it. And once you, once you uh, fine tune your situational awareness skills, your gut instincts will become much more reliable. They will become much more reliable. You will unknowingly be refining or sharpening your uh, gut instincts because your, your gut instincts will start putting these things together in your mind once you start practicing them, okay? So again, the three main things you want to do is you want avoidance, evasion, and escape. Avoidance is avoiding places where you know trouble is going to be. Avoid the situation altogether. If it remotely looks suspicious, look around, Search the area before, you know, look at the area, examine the area before you enter, look at the situation before you put yourself into it. You park your car, look at all your mirrors before you get out, especially at night, especially at night. Try to park closer to the, to the store if it's at night. If you have to park way out in a remote area, uh, it's just go to another store or take a different night or different day, go in the day, whatever. Um, avoid certain situations like don't go make bank deposits at night. That's not a smart thing to do. My wife almost got robbed like that one time when she was um, when she was working in the pizza business. She almost got robbed because she went to make deposits at night at a bank. Not a smart thing to do. But she was young. She didn't know any better, right? So avoidance. Avoid places where you think trouble might be. Evasion. If you see trouble coming, you take a 90 degree angle and you go, you escape it. You just, you just avoid it. You just go away from it. Evade it. Get out of its way. Escape. If it does confront you, you try to retreat. You try to escape. Get out of its way. You don't try to fight. You don't fight unless you have to because the best way to win a fight is not getting in one in the first place. This will keep you safe. It'll keep your kids safe. It'll, it'll uh, maintain your personal safety. So in any case, if uh, anybody has any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and um, in the comment section below this video on YouTube. And I will try to answer those questions in the next video or I'll do a video answering all those questions. And my next video after this will probably be on home security, on hardening your home to prevent someone from just being able to show up at the foot of your bed in the middle of the night and you don't even know that they're there, okay? bad situation, right? Don't want to have that happen in under any circumstances. So anyway, God bless you all. I pray, pray that you, um, uh, you stay safe with the Lord and you stay safe in this world. Uh, I'll do videos on things like riots and riot control and all these things later on, but this will be the first in a series. And the first is situational awareness. This is a lesson you will take with you in every other video lesson I teach, okay? Every other situation you have, your situational awareness level must be on condition yellow at all times. You do that and it'll really help keep you out of 99% of all problems. So anyway, God bless you all. You all have a good day.